All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the June twenty eighth Wednesday occurrence of uh, combined workgroup meeting. Uh, first agenda is from John. Um. Yes. One second. All right. Um, so Mitch here. Mitch is not here. So Mitch is probably pretty important to this, but I think we can still discuss it a bit today. Um, so we're going through some of our infrastructure and kind of modernizing and cleaning some things up. Um, one thing that came up was the policy bot. Um, for those that are not familiar, it's this huge project that was created by basically one person a long time ago. Um, it's pretty big. It, it does all this stuff, um, has like 20,000 lines of code of all this database stuff. And it's like syncing GitHub events to some spanner database. It's doing all this GitHub things like uh, closing issues that are stale, commenting on your PR if it thinks you didn't write tests, which I'm sure everyone just ignores, um, adding labels um, to things, all sorts of stuff. Um, and it's kind of just been sitting there unmaintained. Uh, there's actually, we had kind of auto deployment set up to it, which is broken for two years and no one really cared. Um, we, we fixed that, but it kind of brought up maybe this is not something we should be investing our effort into, um, given that a lot of the stuff has found more standard um, alternatives in either you know Kubernetes infrastructure or GitHub directly um, or part of the CNCF. Um, that we can leverage. So I just want to start a discussion of what stuff we actually care about for this, and if it makes sense to start removing some of the functionality or even removing it entirely. Um, so I just want to get some feedback. If there's things that the bot is doing today that people think are really important, that would be good to know. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, John, so if we were to go ahead and do this, how much work do you expect this to be? Uh, how much work? I don't think it's that much work to remove this stuff. I mean, it depends on how much we're willing to just turn it off versus replace. So we could easily turn it off. That would take. Yeah, I mean minutes. the replace. Uh, it depends if we if we were to replace every single bit, it would take forever, right? We would just be recreating the same thing. Um, so the question really is, what parts do we need to replace? Some of the stuff like adding labels um, or doing like stale bot, I don't think it's that much. It's just swapping, uh, you know, one config for another and making sure that it's actually equivalent. Uh, if we need to do some of the GitHub event stuff, like today we basically like take every GitHub event, which there's a lot of events by the way. It's like an event for literally everything that happens on GitHub and then index it in like 50 different spanner tables. Like it's a very huge project. I'm amazed that we actually did this. Um, replacing that would be like that. We can't replace that. We'd have to just mm -hmm. be fine with removing it and using what already exists as part of the CNCF dev stat stuff. Um, so I, I suspect it would be little, but it depends on what we're willing to cut basically. And if it's not little, it's probably not worth it, right? Otherwise, then we're just trading one thing that's high cost for another thing that's high cost. So since Mitch is not here, uh, how can we reach a decision on this? Uh, I don't think we can reach a decision without more people. Mitch, especially because I feel like Mitch is the closest thing to a maintainer of it, even though it's definitely, <laughs> he would probably not like me saying that. <laughs> Um, but he's you know, been somewhat involved with it. Um, but I think at least if people are against this, hearing that would be useful. Like, it's easy for one person to say, I don't think this thing's useful, but for all I know, everyone could be using all these things that it's doing, and I had no idea, so. Yeah, yeah I guess this one may... of the things, go ahead, Francis. I was gonna say, this may be one of those things that we need to uh, wait a couple of weeks after everyone is back from, um, uh, the Independence Day vacation, uh, because we have pretty light attendance this week. And I assume it is because folks are taking time off. Go ahead, Eric. 
Um, yeah, I guess the, the key thing that I would be curious about is, you know, what of this stuff do, do people use? I'm assuming the Spanner database also drives some of the um, NGSTO um, member maintainer data, like, you know, who's been merging to what repos and how recent and things like that, which I know are used at least visually. Um, like, you know, who hasn't made a, you know, a commit in, in 60 days. So, or not 60 days, I think we go six months or a year. Um, so some of that data, um, we would potentially lose. I'd have to look at dev stats to see um, if some of that could be easily determined. Um, so that's one thing I'm thinking of, um, but that's probably the big thing, <laughs> the spanner database. I mean, I'm not too worried about trying to clean up issues and add labels, right? I know, I think, you know, part of that is right when somebody creates an issue for a PR, you know, you can check the boxes, networking, you know, yada, yada, yada. And then um, the bot automatically adds the label based on what you check. So I guess the question is, does this CNCF test stats, the data in here, is it sufficient to replace what we put in spam? Right. Or at least not necessarily replace what we put in Spanner, but to at least um, replace what people use. That's yeah, in that's Spanner what I database. Mean, right. It, it, it's, it, that's actually what I meant. So the data that's now kept in here since we're part of CNCF community, does that satisfy all the requirements that we need out of the Spanner data? If the answer is yes, then I see little reason we we'll have to maintain this thing since CNCF, being part of CNCF, already comes with uh, these stats. With that, then brings me to the question of what stats do we currently look at? And how are we enforcing those? So it looks like it's steering elections one. Um, uh, no, we don't use we don't use our data for the steering election. I'm pretty sure we use the CNCF data for that. Okay. We don't use it for anything unless someone's looking at eng.eastjo.io. I haven't looked at the page except for right now and ever, basically. <laughs> so I don't. We don't use it in any official capacity. There may be engineers that look at the page for for things. Yeah, I think, you know, some people might look at it. Hey, you know, I can see I am a member or a, a maintainer, whatever, in Istio. Um, but you could potentially get that same data off of dev stats. Like I said, the key thing, and I probably looked at it in this, you know, way once, maybe twice, was when we were trying to clean up some of the um, emeritus things, right? Um, so we looked at the data to see who hadn't um, made a contribution in you know, some period of time. Okay, so I'll bring you back to my original question. So how do we make a decision on this? Do we, you know, wait for one of these uh, forums uh, where there's sufficient attendee and just ask for a vote? That's an inch dashboard. Just so I understand, is the data in Spanner powering uh, this inch dashboard? Yeah. Okay. Under construction, under construction. How much does it cost us? Uh, in terms of dollars, it's mm, roughly 7,000 a month. Um, in terms of engineering time, it's 
actually somewhat low because we don't maintain it at all. Mm -hmm. But it's also just kind of all this code running that's fairly highly privileged in our infrastructure that's never touched as, you know, un unupdated. Like it's it's not the highest cost because we don't touch it. But if we did touch it, then it's, you know, for right. time sink. Uh, so, Eric, you may have contacts on this. So, in the past, for decisions like this, how do we arrive? Um, how do we arrive at a decision? Do we like cast a vote for just community wide? Uh, is this something that we bring to the TLC? Well, that's a good question. Um, I mean, I think the exploratory question which is what john is asking right is appropriate at this point right what you know what do we you know who's using what um what do we need to keep around and then at that point i think we can you know correct me if i'm wrong john um you know determine what we think we should get rid of and then i don't know if that ends up becoming a toc decision probably um, but I think, you know, we, the TOC couldn't make a decision until, you know, we've done some exploration here, which is what I think this is. Reading Keith's comment, copy of the cost as a function of current cost and cost of replacement. And so far, uh, John, this is the only forum you brought up this issue. Yep, and I, like I don't feel super strongly about this by any means. Like I'm like, I just. You know, we've been doing a bunch of general cleanup, and this was one thing that struck me as something that maybe is not holding its weight in cost versus value. Yeah, I, I can see this as two issues. There is the current bots, right? And it sounds like there are a few bots that we can get rid of uh, fairly easily. The replacement bots, uh, first of all, we need people to do work on it. And if we just leave these bots the way it is without replacing it with something else, is that egregious? Like if they just run, do we are we maintaining these on a regular basis? No, not, not really. OK, so there's always option just keep this bot status quo. The yeah, spanner. but just to be clear, the spanner stuff drives the bots as well. It's not just the website. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. So essentially, the bots relies on the spanner data. Yeah, I think how it works is basically the entire system's like funneling GitHub events into spanner so that we can query against it, and then everything's built on top of spanner. Okay. Yeah, everything's built on top of the queries, yes. I see. That's why it's an intertwined issue. I, I, I misunderstood. I thought they these are uh, two separate issues um, and i know at one point you know you know maybe a year or two ago now i'd have mitch would be able to tell you because mitch was the one who did it i know mitch spent a bunch of time trying to to fix stuff with the spanner database and driving things um and i think at that point right we needed somebody with you know google creds and google knowledge um so that would preclude mitch from doing it again if we if we had issues although he might be able to help somebody yeah you brought up a good point um how can we make the if we're going to do work here how can we make this so that it's not dependent on one or employees being in one vendor Right. I mean, if we decide that we totally rely on it, which, you know, I'm, I'm fine either way. Um, but if that's the case and something bad happens, we do need to make sure we have somebody who can fix it. Once we move to the CNCF, 
uh, we can have non-Googlers that are, have access. Okay. And we're also starting to move things to Terraform as well, so it can do it through PR instead of direct access. Sorry, when I say move to CNCF, obviously the project is moving, but we're also moving the infrastructure, which is at a slightly delayed timeline. So. Yeah, I don't know enough about this infrastructure. I just remember Mitch telling me on, on occasion that sometimes he might be able to get me access to certain, looking at certain data, sometimes he can't. Yeah, part of the effort we should be able to have people at least have view access um, but also most things are now in terraform in the test info repo um, so people can kind of indirectly view it and indirectly modify it by looking at the terraform config now so just to suggest the next step i think all of these eight bots uh, we we'll probably need someone to take a look at it and uh, see which of these bots can be replaced by the mechanism that we have in uh, various mechanisms that we have in CNCF and see if we can tease out these bots so that it no longer uh, depends on the spanner data and how much work will it be if those if all the bots that we require can be done can be migrated to based on CNCF stats, then we can make a argument that say, hey, let's migrate and um, sever our dependency with the spanner database. I mean, seven thousand dollars a month. It's it's not a huge amount of money, but it's not pocket change either because it does add up. And uh, John, for CNCF, all this data are we just getting that for free? Yeah, they have some projects where they host. Um, I think they actually basically do the same thing, where they convert GitHub events into a database. Um, I think they do it differently than us. I think they actually convert. Well, anyhow, they have essentially the same thing, and then they expose it through these dashboards. Um, and that's maintained by the CNCF, and I assume they pay for it and whatnot. Uh, they also have, so I think we have like basically the default dashboards um, that they give to all the projects, but they have the ability to add kind of custom dashboards for projects. Um, I don't know the exact process of that, but I know Kubernetes has like 500 dashboards and we only have like 20 or something. So if there was this one that we wanted to see uh, for like a table of inactive developers or something, that's potentially something we could add. I, I, don't want, I can't make any promises on what we can do, but the, the ability to have custom tables is, is an option. TSDP presentation. Just clicking on the links uh, that he's posted. Yeah, it's just it's just basically backing up what John just said. CNCF has both a secret representation of the actual data store, uh, as mm -hmm. well as the TSDB schema that you can use to um, to, to make Grafana dashboards. So I, I I think the core information is the same. Um, just representations probably going to be different. Do you know if it's? I'm assuming no, but do you know if it's possible to make uh, ad hoc queries against third? database or only one that they have in their official aspect that they've approved and whatnot? Uh, I, want, I think that's possible. Yeah, I think you can if you just go to the Explore uh, tab in Grafana. Uh, oh, okay. You can do some some queries with the, it's, yeah, uh, just Postgres queries. OK, cool. So yeah, it's, it's relatively easy to add to your dashboard um, if you want to. I don't know that we'd be able to necessarily like talk to it with the uh, with bots. Um, I'm sure the database is locked down in some way. Um, yeah. But you know, the, as far as just being able to query it and put it on the Grafana website, that definitely seems doable. Cool. Yeah. No, I was just thinking like today in Spanner, I I have in the past and done some ad hoc queries. So being able to do that is here is potentially useful. Yeah.
Okay, so um, how about this? Uh, we can make an announcement. I can write an announcement in the Slack announcements channel and ask for volunteers to look into this and to do some research on the CNSS data and um, uh, see if we can replace the existing bots with so that it's based on the CNCF data and uh, what how much work that might be. And then once we have a result, we can then present it back to this forum and make a decision on which bots to, to migrate and if it's worth the cost to migrate. There is always an option of a status quo, but the status quo uh, is a set of bots that well, one may or may not be used. And also, um, nobody's really maintaining them, and it's costing us seven thousand dollars a month. Yeah, that sounds. I would just say maybe not announcements. Like Easter users don't care about this. I think we have a maintainer channel okay. that you can probably use. Sounds good. Okay. Anything else? Any other feedback on this issue? All right. If not, let's move on to less repos. Uh, yeah, this one I also feel even less strongly about, but I figured I'd bring it up. Um, there's kind of two related efforts here. One is like in the distant past, we had this idea that all these micro repos were a good idea. Um, but then we didn't actually really get value out of them, and we've kind of consolidated a lot. Like we moved the package repo back into Istio recently, um, which has already sped up development quite a bit, I think. Um, so I was looking at other repos that maybe we we don't need. Um, the other issue is using client go is kind of really awkward because you have to use like client go dot virtual service and then the spec field is east to api dot virtual service and like it's not that big of a deal but it's just kind of awkward and not really how the rest of the the world works um so i was looking at if maybe we can kind of consolidate and use these apis um without needing two repos um and having to keep the versions in sync and you know whatnot um so i'll start with the second one because it's easier um we have tools and test infra, which kind of have the same purpose, which is just like all of our tools and test infrastructure. Um, I don't know if there's value in them being separate. It doesn't have a huge cost, really. Um, so I'm not sure if it's worth it either to merge them, but it's just something we may consider. Um, I would merge tools into test infra rather than the other way around for, I don't know, I have no reason why. It just feels better. Um, one, con one concern I have on that one, John, is tools has branches for all the release where test infra does not. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. OK, I'm sold. We'll keep it. <laughs> Thanks. Um, yeah, I know. I totally forgot about that. I was thinking tools wasn't. Um, OK, back to client go then. Um, so the issue, this is not just like an internal refactoring. This would actually impact user-facing behavior in terms of what libraries they import. And it would actually, well, this sentence is confusing. Uh, it would import the Kubernetes client Go in the API. Today, you can import just the API without depending on uh, Kubernetes client Go. And Kubernetes client Go is kind of heavyweight. Um, so this would be a non-trivial change um, and impact users. Um, so yeah, just want to bring that up, whether we think it's worth it. Um, I think for this one, we would only, like we should be face thinking of the user experience of it, not our maintenance cost. Um, you know, whether it's beneficial to have one repo for consistency and ease of use versus the cost of things changing and adding the dependency, basically. Uh, so this increases user cost in what way? 
Um, so in, today you can import just the API, and it has few dependencies. And then you can also import client Go if you want to interact with Kubernetes, and then it imports a bunch of dependencies. So if we merge them, then you can't, you don't have that fine degree of separation. But it's also simpler because there's only one thing that you have to manage. But now that one thing, you have to pay the cost even if you don't use it, basically. So. I've been trying for quite a while to think of ways that we could have one repo without breaking changes to users or you know increase cost but i didn't come up with anything so i figured i would just present this idea and see if people will think it's amazing or hate it um i don't feel super strong the other way but enough that i brought it up so uh you may have mentioned this already but one potential thing that might impact the merging is the um the protobuf uh, or rather the, the lack of JSON uh, marshalling for things in API, uh, because they're protos. Um, how does that impact? I, I remember there was an issue where someone was trying to like basically import uh, Istio types and they couldn't serialize it properly to YAML. Is that, would that be fixed as a consequence of merging these or would there still be two distinct code paths? Um... I don't think it would change. Because we're storing the specs all as, as protobufs, and those don't serialize to JSON by definition. So you would effectively, so instead of there just instead of there being two repos, two representations, there would be there would be in one repo with two different packages. Is that I'm understanding? Uh, so today how it works is in API we have the spec definitions, only the spec and their protos, which obviously have Go-generated code. Now we've added some things that will allow you to use the standard JSON package instead of the proto JSON package. Um, but it serializes in proto semantics, which some people don't like, because things like some enums, they just are set as empty. Uh, and that confuses people, understandably, even though they are Actually, like you can round trip it from JSON to Go and back, and it works fine. It just looks odd. Uh, then in client Go, we take those and we wrap them in a Go struct that adds the object metadata and status, um, and that's it. So client Go doesn't actually have that much, and then it has all the generated clients. So you can do the standard like you know Kubernetes dot dot virtual services v one create or whatever. Uh, and informers and what whatnot. Does that answer your question? I don't know if I was direct there. Yeah, I answered it. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to ask the same question. How do we arrive at a decision? I don't know. I was hoping people would be more opinionated and say they like it or don't, and <laughs> we'd kind of move move on to consensus. If no one has any opinions, then it's hard to justify pushing for this to happen or not happen. I think cool. I'm really cool with the client Go API merge. I am interested in talking about quad suggestion with Istio proxy uh, in the comments. Uh, that's the proxy one. I think will have more opinions actually. <laughs> I think we've already discussed that one on on the there's an issue about it if people haven't seen it. Um, I'll link that on here. There's been a lot of discussion about that one already. We can discuss it more as well, of course, but let me go find the issue. All right, don't wait for me to find the the issue because I okay, so of off. the two issues, this one tools testing for we're gonna keep the way it is. Yeah, merge that client go right. It's a merge client go to API. It sounds like folks don't have a strong opinion one way or another. Uh, it, well, actually, let's put it the way: say no one strongly objects to this. And if we do merge these two repos, does it make 
uh, how much does it save us on the um, on the maintaining engineering side of things? Oh, it's not that much. We should only do this if it's better for users, I think. So we actually may, before we do anything here, want to talk to users that use these um, okay. to see if it would actually make their lives easier like I think it would and whether they're OK with the extra dependency import. This one's not about maintenance for us. Uh, I, I think it would be slightly easier for us, but that's really not not in any relevant in the cost. And do we have such a channel that we can reach out to the users, or is it just up to the contributors to reach out to uh, their users? Um, we don't have a great we don't have a great channel. Um, I mean, we've done surveys. Obviously, that's pretty expensive. Um, mm -hmm. so maybe that's something we should have in general. It's useful to be able to quickly take the pulse of the community on things. But uh, today, we only have ad hoc methods or expensive methods, I think. So if we make this change, then all the downstream products based on Istio will inherit as well, right? Which means the customers of the, of the vendors who were based on Istio will experience this. Yeah, people that build on top of Istio. So things like right. native um, vendors, potentially integrations, whatnot. So one way we can do this is just have the vendors reach out to their users. Since we, on the open source community, we lack a good forum to gather user feedback. Yeah, we can also probably see open source projects that use it and then reach out to them directly. Like you can search through. Uh, I think there's some ways to find who's importing your Go project if they're open source, and then you try to reach out to them as well. Keith? Yeah, just a, a random thought came to my mind when it comes to trying to increase the touch points we have with the community and taking the pulse and stuff like that. I mean, we've got multiple um, to focus events between Istio days at KubeCon as well as at one point there is like the virtual Istio con. Uh, don't know what the future of that is. Do we think that it might be worthwhile to have some sort of uh, survey at that at those events? Um, since those are where you're going to see, I think, a lot of community members who want to learn more, um, who are who, who are present. Do you think that that would be a good place to maybe invest some uh, some surveys? Uh, when are those coming up? Istio Day is at KubeCon North America. The next one is at KubeCon North America, November mm -hmm. 6th through 9th. Um, I don't know what the status of IstioCon is, if it's been superseded by Istio Day or not. Yeah, so the, the, the my question is timing, right? Because November is still five months away. Uh, John, can this wait? In September, so. Yeah, this is not oh. urgent at all. Right. Okay. Yeah, so then maybe we can wait until then and just get, like he suggested, get a uh, survey. And meanwhile, um, anyone watching this recording, especially from the the vendors who build on top of Istio, uh, please have your PMs and TAMs or whatnot reach out to customers and ask them about feedback. And yeah, just to clarify, I think my my suggestion about surveys is, is more than just this particular issue, right? I mean, we've um, talked multiple times in the past about not having um, you know not not having a good way to get surveys out. They're expensive to run. Um, the events that we do seem like good potential uh, touch points with with users, and maybe we should leverage those more frequently um, for more general. It's a good point, since everybody's already there. Oh, is this still con happy? Did I miss that? Something. Something. Uh, I don't want to say any, any details because I don't know if it's public, but maybe offline. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I saw it on the on the meeting notes and uh, didn't know. Okay. Well, I'll I'll ping someone offline. All right. 
any other topics? Going once, going twice, going three times. Uh, if not, then that concludes the meeting today. Thank you, folks. I will talk to you all later.